Alright, howdy folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to more Gates of Hell. Today we're playing as the Germans during the Battle for the Bulge, more specifically following the units that did Operation Greif, which we'll talk about in detail, but I think most obvious has to be that A, the Germans are wearing and using American equipment, and this horrible monstrosity, the Panther M10, which we'll also talk about a little bit later on in this video, but clearly as you can see, it's basically a Panther tank and it's been remodeled and repainted to somewhat resemble an M10 Wolverine. Though I'll leave it down to you guys in the comments if you think you would be fooled by one of these. Anyway, a very short mission. You can find the link to it down in the description. We're going to be playing as the Germans. We just came on to this American checkpoint behind the lines. Our goal is to get past here and destroy an enemy armored column as well as some US artillery behind their lines. So the gig is up. I think the officer that uh, held our convoy up and was asking some questions, perhaps about the latest score in the baseball game back home, might have figured out that we're not really Americans, though I guess that didn't really help them because we do have a pretty large convoy here. We have a couple of half tracks, a couple of these fake Panther M10s. We're just gonna grab some of these and uh, turn them off move at will. It's gonna move down the road ASAP. We do have a King Tiger with us as well. We'll move these half tracks down and we'll get these Panther M10s moving down the field. I don't really think, so they actually removed the cupola from these M10s. They added some sheet metal here. I think they also removed part of the muzzle brake as well. And obviously they're painted green and they have white stars on them and stuff, but I'm not sure if they really ever fooled anyone or how many they really made disguise some of the unit's Panthers, but whether that's five or 10 or 15, I'm not sure. I just can't imagine that they were able to trick a lot of Americans. Interestingly enough, is that obviously the Germans dressed up as Americans with American equipment were right intermingled with other German forces. And the last thing you want is for your troops to start engaging your own troops dressed as the enemy. So there was a lot of ways that they tried to identify themselves towards other uh, to them friendly German units by having like little triangles on their vehicles, which I don't think are actually here on these Panthers. Oh, we have just found enemy armor in the background. Uh, but they also had a certain way of having their guns set to a certain angle. I just, oh, okay, we just love one of the half tracks up there. But I'll get back to that in a second. I just want to try to eliminate these uh, enemy Shermans first. See, actually, they're engaging my King Tiger right now. Let's just say that that's because, ooh, that was a perfect hit, actually. Holy crap. Let's just say they're hitting my, uh, my King Tiger because they think I'm a friendly, right? That's exactly why. Oh, now he's turning his gun, but I think we just got the crew out of that one. The commander just got exploded in the turret. There's, I think, one more Sherman to the left of this one. Okay, that one's down. And, oh, we have an M18 way behind us, but we'll walk, we'll, we'll worry about him in a second. Try to get some of my... Oh, let's get our Chaffee maybe onto that. As we run some of our infantry forward here. They're mostly on move at will, which is not a thing I'm a huge fan of personally, but... But oh, it's a cool flag on the back there, like an air identifier. Not that we really need the air identifier because of the horrible weather. That would obviously be the reason why there couldn't be any American air support, at least not initially. It's not got this... Is it just a small AT gun? It kind of makes me feel bad because this King Tiger is just about to yeah, blast him. What, is, what are these? They're just little 37 mils? Or what is that even just a... Oh, that's just actually just a machine gun. Okay, let's have a Chaffee deal with this Hellcat. But basically what they did was having a little triangle in the back of the uh, allied vehicles, whether they were the captured ones um, or these like Panther M10s. They would also have their gun always pointing at a nine o'clock position to try and hopefully, uh, you know... Oh, what? I, I didn't know that was possible. I think we just shot the Hellcat straight. How did that happen? This is just a little tiny, but this is technically a 75 millimeter gun, but how did he just destroy the Hellcat? The turret just went clean off. That was in the middle of talking about the nine o'clock position thing. I can't even get that through. So basically they would always have their guns pointed at the nine o'clock position while they were driving in convoy. Uh, that way, hopefully, letting friendly German units know, like, hey, this is a very specific American vehicle. 
But other than that, they wore like a pink or blue scarves. They would sometimes have no helmets on or try to take them off at least while they were, you know, amongst friendly units. And then I guess at night, they would try to use torches with a blue or red cover. Just anything really to try to pers- Oh, we just lost one of our Panthers, I think. Try to persuade friendly German units that, hey, this is not an actual enemy tank. Even though, I, again, I'm wondering how, to what degree, people, both Germans or, um, I guess, Americans, would actually be tricked by the, uh, you know, the Panther M10 specifically. We do have a bunch of infantry back here I'll bring up. And we'll probably bring some infantry over here as well and try to really go after that church area because we just have to clear the front line. Well, technically, we came from behind the front line and our job is just to do some cleanup here. Uh, because we had the element of surprise, though, I'm not sure how the King Tiger managed to stay um, sort of, you know, a surprise element. But we have American dressed infantry who sometimes have German weapons like M1 Grand, sometimes have bars or uh, Thompsons, but also STGs, MG42, but also bazookas. I'm not, again, 100% sure on the realism there. I think they had a couple of them definitely that were e equipped with American equipment, but there's a, I feel like there's a misconception. Not an entire 2,000 man unit was sent behind enemy lines to go mess stuff up. It was only a couple hundred men who were initially sent, uh, you know, the, the best American or English speaking men were sent to go behind enemy lines, you know, fully dressed up, fully equipped uh, with American Jeeps and vehicles. And it was this group, the one with the Panther M10s and perhaps some American equipment like American uniforms or American helmets, but it was them who would do the main part. It was the, the, the commando unit, the couple of hundred of men that really were the best English speakers. They would go out and those would actually later on also sometimes be tried for espionage because they were wearing American equipment trying to go pass as an American. Let's see if we can find out because there was enemy artillery positions here. So let's load AP. Oh, there is a vehicle spotted. I don't know if that's, that, that's a tank. The second one, there's, oh, 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 okay. There it is. Is that a Wolverine? Or I can't tell. Is that a Wolverine or a Sherman? Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good at all. Okay, that was indeed a Wolverine. So, Americans not tricked by the uh, camouflage. But the idea was to have a lot of U.S. vehicles disguised or um, U.S. vehicles like captured ones and use them in this operation. But they only managed to get uh, like a couple of scout cars, uh, a few Jeeps, a bunch of trucks, and only like a single Sherman. And that's why I think they had to really resort to this Panther idea, uh, which I don't know who came up with that. It's, it's an interesting idea for sure. But they had to come up with the Panther idea because they didn't have enough armor to go along with the, um, the convoys otherwise. I mean, you can't really go behind enemy lines and just rely on, on infantry and light vehicles. So they had to try to get some of these Panthers to come along to take the place of any Shermans that they couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't use. So it's interesting is if they were able to, or if they wanted to make these Panthers look like Wolverines, I'm surprised they didn't actually manage to capture even a single Wolverine and, you know, put that into use. It was definitely apparently easier to use a, uh, a captured or a, a panther and dress it up as a wolverine and to actually have a, uh, a captured wolverine. So I guess they just never captured many of those. Do we have a panzerfaust here somewhere? Oh, this one just got set on fire. Maybe we'll just keep running here a good bit. Uh, keep running up. We'll get our Tiger II to advance. And this M10 is basically good to go here in a second. I really would love to get a nice panzerfaust rocket on the Sherman though. Oh, that's so satisfying. And then I think it's just a little bit of enemy resistance left. We'll blow up the Sherman here. Nice side shot with the 88. I'm actually surprised that didn't just explode in a thousand pieces. It is confusing seeing a bunch of Americans running around and not knowing which one of the Americans is you and which one of the Americans is, well, the Americans, but... Someone in there? Oh, there was. Okay, there was two guys in there. Okay, let's check out. Oh, this burning up now. I don't want to get too much into that fire. But I think if we turn off the fog of war, which is Alt F, okay, there's a single man left alive back here. So we can go knock him out. And then, eh, I think we did all right. The, I sh probably should have disabled all of the uh, move at will on the vehicles. 
because that kind of ruined some of my uh, my initial units. So these Panthers I put out here myself, they're technically, re this one's more damage. This one is technically pretty repairable, but it is cool to see that somebody modeled all these units and uh, and sort of specific units into Gates of Hell. And uh, it's always fun to just do a little random scenario. In this case, you know, the Germans doing the uh, Operation Greif. And uh, it's very cool to see something like the Erzatz M10 here in uh, in Gates of Hell. Something that I just, I think I saw first in World of Tanks. And then I did more research on it. And then ever since then, I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for the, uh, the Panther M10 specifically. Just because it's such a random vehicle. Well, it's going to make sure we knock out this last enemy... Soldier, almost at last enemy American, implying that we're playing as the good American. So technically, I guess we are playing as. Oh, that was a headshot. I guess technically I just grabbed the German to kill that guy with. But it's. It, I can see how it would be confusing. You're a bunch of Germans and you're attacking, and suddenly there's a bunch of Americans around you, but they're also allied. So who do you shoot? Who you don't shoot? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.